Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Jesus said, The first commandment is this Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Brothers and sisters, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now let us confess together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you 
in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all, your, all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities that may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Today's Old Testament reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. It can be found on page 16 in your pew Bible. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which... I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac said to his father Abraham, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. He said, Behold, the fire and the wood but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went both of them together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of a son. So Abraham called the name of that place, The Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, On the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. The word of the Lord. Show me the path of life, you my hope and my shelter. In your presence is endless joy, at your side is my home forever. You will show me the path of life, you my hope and my shelter. 
shelter. In your presence is endless joy. At your side is my home forever. Faithful God, I look to you. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory, King of endless glory. Let's go. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. And Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. And calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will find it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For what can a man give in return for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation... Of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. If anyone would come after me, Let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory, King of endless glory. Father, send your Holy Spirit to open ears and speak through me to those hearing today in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Um, I just wanted to give, I've had quite a few questions about um, my health. I had an angiogram Tuesday, and it came out, there was no blockages, there was no, they couldn't find any problem at all. So that's either I'm healed or they haven't found the problem yet, so we'll figure out what the deal is. So just want to give everybody an update. So... uh, Mary Lent. Why don't we call it Mary Lent? Or Happy Lent? It should be. We say Happy St. Patrick's Day or Happy Fourth of July. Why don't we call it Happy Lent? I know we eliminate the hallelujahs and strip down the altar and the flowers and You know, maybe some extra candles here and there from the service. But, you know, Lent is really not a season of lamenting, pain and suffering. It's a season of our release from bondage, our slavery to sin. And it culminates with a celebration of the risen Lord's resurrection. Now, we refer to this season commonly as Lent, but it truly is Holy Lent. Several years ago, I thought Lent was a useless season where people celebrated and walked around looking dour, you know, the whole sackcloth and ashes thing just before Jesus returned. You know, me on the street corner with a sackcloth throwing ashes on my head, showing the world how I'm suffering for giving up chocolate. He was a pathetic sight. <laughs> 
<laughs> After a holy Lent service several years ago, a close friend of mine asked me what I was giving up for Lent. Well, with my attitude, I told him I don't do that stuff. I thought it, you know, it was over the top, not needed for my salvation, so why do it? He told me, well, I'm giving up wine. I asked, why? You see, I like good wine. And I saw no reason to give it up. It's not a sin. And Jesus drank wine. He answered, I'm drinking too much, and I want to make sure I'm not an alcoholic. Hmm. I drank more than he did. I'm convicted. At this point, we were about halfway into Lent, and I decided to do the same out of concern that I might have a problem. And I found that wine was not my problem, but my pride was. You see, it took God's help to keep me to my promise. On my own, if I would have said, I'll just quit for three weeks. At the very first temptation, I have no doubt, I would have reasoned a way to get back in to my sin. I've seen me do it. But I promised God, and that's different. So I gave up wine for Holy Lent, but I gained an understanding of Holy Lent. You see, the Holy Spirit showed me that I need God to break through my bondage to sin. Our brother, Dick Jordan, who's gone to be with the Lord, used to tell me, if you're white knuckling it, you won't make it. We must have God's help to resist any temptation to sin. Holy Lent is part of my sanctification now. And with God's help, coming closer to him. The Holy Spirit convicts me and uses Holy Lent to cleanse me of my sin. I have to ask you a question. Isn't it a kind of a delusion of Satan that Holy Lent's not that important? That, as I thought, it makes you look like one of those Pharisees Jesus condemned. I don't need Lent to focus on cleansing my sins all year long. Or, I don't need Lent to focus on my sins. I do this all year long. Yeah, right. Or how about I'm not a priest, so I don't need to be as holy. Well, actually, Peter tells us, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. Yes, you. Henry, last week at the 1045 service, while discussing the He Gets Us commercials, pointed out, and I quote, God loves us too much to leave us as we are. That hit me so hard I wrote it down. And Paul in our epistle states it as, for I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. God truly loves us. We're in bondage to sin. And that sin separates us from God. God wants to know you. God desires a relationship with you. So what is that like? Well, our psalmist tells us today, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Can it be stated any better than that? God desires us to experience the fullness of joy and pleasures evermore, but our own separates us from him by our choice. He set the rules before creation. And in our arrogant pride, we ignore those rules. Jesus asks a critical question in today's gospel. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? Why should we accept the delusion of Satan that Holy Land is not helpful to our sanctification, to our coming closer to God? Why should we accept this? We go to work tomorrow to gain the world, that one more business deal, 
that one more class to teach, that one more sale to make, that one more project to finish. But are we addressing the sin that separates us from God? Lent allows me to focus, to target the sin God has been convicting me of, to avoid forfeiting my soul. So what do we do? First, we have to see past the delusion Satan has created about Lent. Holy Lent is freedom from the bondage of sin, not some legalistic, unbiblical practice. Take the opportunity to use Holy Lent as an opportunity to sharply flo- focus on closely, sharp focus fo- closely on, that's easy for me to say, <laughs> try that again, to sharpen, sharply focus closely on cleansing your sin. I didn't mess that up the first service. <laughs> I found there are two levels of sin to address during Holy Lent. There's a surface sin. And there's a deep sin. That surface sin is a socially acceptable sin we give up and talk about that makes us look like that Pharisee in sackcloth and ashes I mentioned, repenting for all to see. I am giving up chocolate, I lament. And all the people around me drag out handfuls of ashes and commiserate with me. People feel sorry for me for giving up something so wonderful and delicious, but I will endure. Actually, personally, I can live without chocolate. By the way, if you're a chocolate fiend, pick something else. By the way, and don't let the professional mourners I hired know that. They won't do as good a job if they found out I'm not serious. But this is a surface sacrifice. Do you all get it? It's something common, something easy. There are deeper sins, or two, or three, that I'm addressing in prayer daily with God's help. Sins I'm asking God to permanently cleanse me of. Daily, I have to talk to God and beg. He even take the temptation of those sins away from me. Pastor Skip, last week, talked about temptation, helped us understand a little bit about it. But I find that even my temptation leads to further sin. Anyone ever heard of Daryl Royal? Johnny, you were going to college back when he was a coach, right? He coached a football team in the 1960s. And uh, when Darrell Royal was asked why he refused to pass the ball, he answered, three things can happen and two are bad. Well, with temptation, four things can happen and three are bad. The odds are worse. The only good outcome when you face temptation is you resist it. True. True. The other three are surrenders that are rooted in sin. Your first surrender is, I'm not strong enough to resist the temptation. That is your lack of faith in God. The second surrender is, I deserve this. And that's your pride. And lastly, the final surrender is, well, everybody else is doing it. That's your envy. This is why we need the Holy Spirit to help us. This is why we need Lent. When we're in communion with God through the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, we're guided down the right path. If we try to do it on our own, the deceiver, Satan, will delude us down the wrong path. And you notice sin goes from sin to sin to sin to sin. And it takes you way off of the path of God. Remember, you are a royal priesthood of God. Isn't it time we acted like it? Remember our gospel passage? For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to forfeit his soul? (laughs) To summarize, many look at Holy Lent is a season of dour penance. I want you to look at it as a season of joy, release from bondage of sin. I look forward to Holy Lent. I take a personal inventory of the sins I struggle with, and I laser focus on addressing those sins. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, during this season, I see freedom from bondage. 
it's not too late. During my first real experience with Holy Lent, I was right where we are right now in the season. I ask you to take the rest of this service to find that deep sin the Holy Spirit is convicting you of. And when tempted, ask God's help to resist the temptation. And today, come to the altar during Holy Communion. Cleanse to that sin. When the tempter tempts you, remember the compounding sin Satan uses to get you to break your promise and pray to God to resist those temptations and release you of all the sins. And if you slip and fall, look up. While you're laying on the ground, just as Isaac was laying on the cold slab of the altar, accepting his death, look up. Jesus is standing there, waiting, arms extended, to help you back on your feet. Simply ask him. And together, he will help you rise from your sin. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, come upon all hearing today and show them the sin in their life the Father desires cleansed. Not for our glory, but for the glory of the Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Deacon Joe. Please rise and let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. The hunger, fear, and justice. For all those who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the church of God. For all bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and, and concerns of this congregation, especially Father Henry and Colleen Pendergrass, Mike Desparius, Jim Mitchell, Father Bill Tapley, and Pam Thompson. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of life itself and for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom especially John Mulawe and his eight companions. Mm -hmm. 
Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. <laughs> Merciful Father. Please rise. <clears throat> Hear the words of St. Paul. Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ Jesus, we have been brought near through the shedding of his blood. For he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace with you. Alrighty, let's see whose birthdays we are celebrating today. Ty Atwater, Barrett Baldridge, Will Boyd, Devin Pfeiffer, Charlie Qualia, Arabella Roberts, and Joyce Tapley. Let us pray a blessing for all of them. Lord, bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face upon you and give you peace. Amen. And no one that we know of is celebrating a wedding anniversary this week. If we're wrong, stand up. <laughs> Speak now. <laughs> okay. Okie dokie. Uh, just one quick announcement before the announcements. And that is that we are going to bless the bells again. After this service, we'll go. This is the only door you can use to get to them. So after this service, we'll go straight out these doors and we'll bless the bells again. Uh, it won't hurt them a bit to get blessed twice. And uh, I look forward to doing that with you. All right, good morning and welcome. You are a guest with us this morning. We are so grateful you're here. In the seat back in front of you, there's a card. We'd love for you to fill that out and give us your information just so we could get to know you. Um, and then I don't have very many announcements, but I want to touch through these as quickly as possible. So this Wednesday night, we will have our normal Wednesday night, except we still are going to be doing the Stations of the Cross during Lent. That will begin at 530 um, but meal will go ahead and start at 545 and there'll be some folks that are in here doing the stations and other folks eating so we can get the classes on time and we're going to continue the classes the last days of Jesus. Um, the choir, we, we hear all these voices and it would be so great if some of those voices were right over here. Um, so come join the choir. It'd be a great place for community and get to serve and be a part of what's going on here. Um, this next Friday night, the Watato Children's Choir from Kampala, Uganda, will be at um, True Light at 6.30. Um, and so if you would like our 6.40, did I say that right? Am I just not seeing the time? I was just reading another time. So the choir will be there toasted by, um, by True Light, 6 p.m., Friday, March 1st. Healing Prayer Service is next Sunday. Lisa Bounds from Reflection Ministry will be speaking at 6.30. Um, and then finally, the Easter Bunny Assistance. And there's 20 need, there's a need for 20 helpers. Take a pack of 50 eggs and stuff them. And on here it says, please no chocolate coins or trinkets. Just no chocolate. The coins and trinkets are fine. That just was, the parentheses was not in the right place. So coins and trinkets are fine. No chocolate. And that is it. Welcome to the, come by the Welcome Center Thursday, March 20th, 28th for a time to stuff and bring them by. So that's all I got.
Brothers and sisters, do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. come from you, O Lord, and of your own have we given thee. All right. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Please kneel or sit as you are able. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and meet with you. In Christ, you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all people a sacrifice for us. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. 
Father, if you do this, in remembrance of him. May his blood be shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat these drink and these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. As our Savior taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this daily our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb.
taking my cross, my sin, my shame, rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am high, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. 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 John, Dale, Lucian, Mike. We send you out to share communion this week with Patsy Sayers, Dan Leonard, and Tom Scott. May you carry the prayers of all of us as you take this sacrament of Christ's presence. May those who receive it from you be strengthened and encouraged in that community we have together in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. All right. Just a reminder, we will bless the bells immediately after the service. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. By leading of the Holy Spirit, help us to follow you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. May Christ give you the grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, to take up your cross and follow him, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you often and always. Amen.
to the blessing of the uh, bells. And uh, Brother Mike has a whole, or the ushers have the uh, bulletins to hand out. I hope he's not running off. So, um, like I said, after the dismissal, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.